Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Pub Table Racers, episode number 46. 46. I uh, hope everyone's having a great time, great day, everything. My name is Tim Packer, and sitting next to me is my co-host and co-owner of Pub Table Racers, Lauren Grossell. And sitting between us is Don Smile. We'll get to him in a minute, because he's got some really cool stuff to talk about tonight in regards to uh, historical photos and marketing and branding. So all you short trackers out there, pay attention. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. This is the guy that's going to help you not get your sponsors, get them for you. He's going to help you show you what the value is. It, explain how to right. get it. Yeah. So that way you guys are, you know, calling me. There's going to be a test later. <laughs> There'll be a test. That's right. We'll get a quiz later. Um, I'm so not I'm, taking it. I'm not <laughs> taking it. That's fine. So, Warren, why do we have a bucket of Miller Highlight? Well, we have a bucket of Miller Highlight because this is pub table racers and we're going to drink some beers and right. we're going to talk about racing. Yep. And also, we drink Miller High Life because Bobby Allison right. is our childhood hero Still and is. our adult hero. hero. Right. Exactly. So, I uh, went to dinner with him last night. I'm not named Johnny. It's a fact. We went to I Bambini, had some great talks. He was talking about stuff from 1950s races. That's so. his favorite place. That's it. Oh, it's great. Yeah, you can only have them. So, I have to do the cheers. That's cheers. Do so, Don, cheers, Don, Don. Don has a, what do you have there? A lining? He has a lining cool. He found a, a shandy in my refrigerator. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bunch I got, of stuff I keep in some there. lines in here, you know, it's a Wisconsin <laughs> thing. I have to take my sip. And the reason tonight I am uh, sporting the Batman uh, koozie is because it was 55 years, 55 years ago today, in 1966, when the Batman TV show debuted. So I thought I'd pay some tribute. So here we go. You saw the first episode, right? Mm. <laughs> I was one and a half. You were in diapers, but you probably, saw yeah, it. yeah. So. But uh, yeah, and since then you might have been sitting there. You're full of shit. You might have been sitting there. You, but I was watching it. You're watching. I was doing my own kaboom. Or you might have went. I was doing my own pow. <laughs> right, let's get started here. All, all right, right. in go. the news. Okay. Um, first of all, we have an auction item. Brad from uh, Lake Norman Patio and Game Rooms gave us a really cool item, and we want you guys to see this. It's uh, uh, hang on. I got it. Check this out. It is a signed Austin Dillon glove and shoe from uh, last year. We don't know what race because he did it all the time. Andy's Frozen Custard is a sponsor. So Brad donated this and we are going to auction off starting tomorrow. Uh, we uh, are going to throw in some Miller High Life Racing. Uh, some, of our, some old memorabilia. Old memorabilia. So we're going to put that. We're going to start that tomorrow. So you can have an Austin Dillon signed. Um, shoe, driving shoe, and glove, actually race used, and the money, the money's going to go to MRO, which is the Motor Racing Outreach, Outreach. Uh, it's kind of like the Church of NASCAR, yeah. Correct. so uh, they've, uh, I called Billy Maldon today, I said, hey, I got this thing, we'd love to have it, so we're going to auction that up, and we'll start that tomorrow, i got pictures going up, also, people that wanted the Pub Table Racer hats, uh, the black ones are back, we went through those quickly. We'll have those available right now, so go on our store and see that. So we got that going on, and then news, let's do news real quick. News real quick. All right, so in case you haven't heard, Haley Deegan, Deegan said an R word during an online race, and uh, there was a big uproar. She apologized. NASCAR did not suspend her because it wasn't really a slur of any kind. It wasn't. It wasn't. It's derogatory, but it wasn't. It is derogatory. Uh, it wasn't. Like super derogatory, super derogatory. Right. Um, but still, so she apologized. So she has to take sensitivity training. She's not going to miss any races. Um, so once again, be careful what you say and do out there, folks. You never know who's listening. Uh, also, uh, I'll tell you really quickly. Sure. When I was on the NASCAR team, right? I posted something on my Twitter. wasn't even derogatory. I'm not kidding you. Six hours later, I was in the principal's office. Right. Okay. They monitor every person every, that works yep. for NASCAR. And if they don't monitor, there's someone out there who's going to turn you in. Right. Yeah, there's a bunch of people out there. What do they call it? Call, cancel keep culture? Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Keep just it clean. Keep it simple. Have that's fun. It. New sports weather. That's all you got to keep it about. Right. Um, Rich Bickle, our guest last week. Warren, I think. Drivers, I want you to listen up. People that come on as a guest here, work with me, Don. They end up <laughs> winning. They end up winning. They end up doing something successful. Something successful. So, uh, Briscoe. Chase Briscoe is yeah. here. He ends up winning a bunch of races. Uh, Corey LaJoy finds a new ride. Yeah. Rich Bickle last week, he was on with us. He went back to Wisconsin. He goes up to Eagle River, Wisconsin. Which, this track is like phenomenal. A big high banked oval. It reminded me of... Uh, Snowmobile. Snowmobile, Bristol. A sit down, so... Right. 
I haven't watched snowmobile racing for a while, right. and I, I had to watch this. Yeah. this. You sit in these things mm -hmm. now and drive them. You don't like lay on them like we used to. With a roll to. cage. Yeah, it's it's like right. a modified. Right. That's a snowmobile. With, it's like a modified with skis and a track. That's so wild. Rich went up there, and he um, it was a 600 cc outlaw class, and he went up there and he won. So he got his first victory of the year, uh, the world champions up there. So he wins. After being on pub table racers, just saying, you drivers out there, five, five time winner up there though of the Eagle Rip. Was he five time winner? Yeah, that's what okay. I seen on, okay. on his post. <clears throat> Very good. I didn't know that. Know that. He's no slouch. No <laughs> snowmobiles. Um, and also, ice. <laughs> also, um, we talked about you know the old school. Well, as of today, Rich Bickle is now on Twitter. Go see at Rich Bickle on Twitter. Follow him. A lot of cool stuff coming up. He also, in addition to testing this week in Arca. For the Arca race, he's down in Daytona. After that, he's going to slide over to Showtime, Showtime Speedway, formerly Sunshine Speedway, in Clearwater, and he's going to run a, uh, I think it's Arca Midwest Tour or something like that. It was supposed to be the Watermelon in Cordell. So you people in Tampa, St. Pete, you want to go see Rich Bickle race, go to Showtime Speedway. Not this coming weekend, the following week on the 23rd, 24th. And that's some kind of late model or something. Late, super late model okay. down there, his team there. And then he'll come back, and then we go to... Uh, Daytona for the Arca race. So Rich Bickle, he's doing his final 45 tours. 40, he's he's going to keep busy. He's calling his final. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Oh. I, said, don't, <laughs> I said, don't turn into Kiss and do like a bunch of farewell <laughs> tours. And there's another thing he might have coming up that if he does this one, this will blow people's mind because it's something he's never done in racing before. He did it one time, but he's, he's denounced it. But he said, if I get this offer to do this, he can't turn it down. So. Stay tuned. Of winning, how about the Buffalo Bills? Well, year? we're getting to that. I should hear it by Jim Kelly signed Buffalo Bills jersey, uh, the Legends collection there. I didn't wear no Packers stuff. We, That's it. We won any. You were number one seed. Well, yeah, we won. Right. So this is signed. It says, uh, I'll wear something next week. I know we, you are. If we beat the Rams. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to enjoy it while I can. So uh, the Bills, congrats, <laughs> guys. All my Buffalo fans out there, buff, fellow Buffalo fan. So this is signed. It says, uh, to Big Time Tim. This was Jim's. Uh, I don't know what this means. It says Go Bills, Jim Kelly, and this is uh, the Legends Collection. So that's you know, it. I don't wear. No Go Bills. It's the, this is the first time I don't want to hear it. I don't <laughs> this is the first time I wore it since he signed it two years ago in November. Okay. All right. So that's it. Uh, first kiss <laughs> reference of the night, Ryan Clark. Hey man, you got to slide him in. All right. So let's enough. We got all that covered. Yeah. Oh, the Chili Bowl underway qualifying. That's going to be huge this weekend. I mean, the mm -hmm. the, the NASCAR talent. What do you? Uh, Chase Briscoe. Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott, Ryan, Ryan Newman, Newman. Uh, Boucher, Larson, Larson trying to defend, and um, Enrico's there. Oh, I'm sure, Enrico's there, and um, is Tony? Dr <clears throat> no, no, but uh, Justin Allgaier oh, with yeah. an Evil Knievel theme car, which is no kidding, badass. Mm -hmm. Like I saw, I was like, oh, I just didn't have to look that one up. Yeah, look it up. So we, uh, that's the Chili Bowl. So racing's going on. Uh, someone says Stenhouse we're getting, there. Uh, I'm not sure if he is. I don't know if he is. Okay. All right, hang on. <sighs> Let's get to our guest. Let's get to our guest. Mm -hmm. Tonight, uh, we are very honored and pleased to have with us Don Smile. He is the in founder. The uh, what's that? In the, oh, yeah. in the <laughs> Don Smile. Is, <laughs> he is the founder and owner of Smile Marketing Group. He has been in the sport for 20 something years. Five years. 25 years, yeah. like us or more. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to being part of the uh, marketing aspect, he also owns the largest. Not the largest. One, one of, of the largest. One of the largest. Yeah. Photographic collections of history. Uh, Tom Kirkland, who was the official photographer of Darlington, mm -hmm. who actually photographed Darlington being built. Mm -hmm. And he has that collection that uh, you bought from him and his family. And then Don Hunter, who was a legendary photographer in NASCAR, he also has his collection. We're going to show some photos of that. And then we're going to talk about later, he's going to talk about marketing, how it applies to the sport, and how short trackers, even professionals, or even anybody involved in the sport, right. can benefit from your marketing specialist expertise how's that and and if they need you to contact them don't, uh, don't smile see that's the win that i'm going to get out of this exactly right? Right. And we need more clients right. Right. Oh, exactly. we, we also do yeah. something for you <clears throat> did we sign as a professional you want a beer? yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, have a highlight all right so this is where we do the uh, welcome welcome pop table racer thank you for having done perfect Thanks for so coming yeah. we appreciate it and um so first of all we ask everybody uh, how did you where are you from originally my dad was in the navy not quite a bit, yeah. um, but uh, I grew up in Key Largo, Florida, uh, a good portion of my life, and, and then I uh, 
came to North Carolina. And I've lucky, been lucky in you. North. Car- oh. You know, it's interesting you say that because every year we'd go to Daytona. That that time between mm-hmm. uh, the qualifying on Sunday mm-hmm. and then the qualifying races on Thursday, most of the teams would fly home. Right. I'd get a rental car, drive to Key Largo, yeah, sure. and spend the four days down there and Perfect. reminisce about mm-hmm. growing up. Yeah. Um, in Florida, like, grouper bikes. Yeah. Um, oh, so yes. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. You didn't have to shovel It's sand. interesting because when you're, when you're a kid, you don't know. You have no point of reference. Right. It's just where you grow up. But sure. I go back there now, and I look, and I go, holy crap, I grew up here? This is amazing. <laughs> um, I did that in Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. Holy crap, I grew up here? So um, I go back, and I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> So yeah, but I've lived in North Carolina for minus uh, one. 35 years. <laughs> right. uh, okay. So I've been here the majority of my life. Um, okay. Yeah. And your interest in racing started with? You know, it's interesting. I was working for Marriott Corporation, um, yeah. and I was a NASCAR fan, and I re- always wanted to get into the television side of the business. Right. It's Rich Bickley. He wants to call yeah, yeah, he's calling to tell you, hey. Go ahead, call He's calling to tell you, hey. said. Um, and I always wanted to get into the, into the racing side, you know, the television side of the business. And... Um, so I told my wife, we'd only been married like six months, and I told her, I want to quit my job, and I want to move to Charlotte, and I want to try to get involved in, in broadcasting. And you're racing. living where now? I was in Raleigh. And you, it's six months you told her? Six months in. She still to this day says that I did the bait and switch on her. She, I waited until we got married and then told her I wanted to <laughs> i got to ask you for a personal. How'd that go over? Uh, not well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I spent six months living by myself. Okay, okay, got it. All right, um, got it. All right. <laughs> but, um, and so I moved to Charlotte, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I was... Working for Marriott, I was I was a, a, a manager, had a, had my own site, had 35 employees, right. and I said, I just want to quit my job and, and get involved in, in racing somehow, and, and I ended up getting an internship. So I go from making this really great salary yeah. in the corporate world oh, yeah. to sure. becoming an intern with zero dollars. <laughs> um, but I was fortunate um, to go to work for World Sports Enterprises. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was in 94, so uh, Patty Wheeler, Humpy's daughter, yep. ran World Sports. At the time, the largest producer of motorsports television in the United States. This is pre-Fox and NBC. Sure. So this was Turner and TNN and yeah. ESPN, and you know everybody had a little piece of the pie yeah. in the NASCAR world. I did some time there, I remember. Yeah, and so I was a, I worked on the television production side and, and helped produce content for the the networks and and the shows, and um, really fell in love with the sport. It really started to understand the history, and I gravitated toward the history side. Um, you know, I started telling stories about the history, yeah. and I got to know. And you're, you know, you talk about Bobby Allison. I'll never forget that seminal moment. I was a huge Bobby fan, and and before I ever got involved in the sport, and then I transferred to Davey. Mm-hmm. You know, when he got involved, right. huge Davey fan. And I'll never forget the first race I went to. They were running the Legends race for uh, some of the older drivers on the right. quarter quarter mile infield uh, Wednesday week. And sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so my producer says to me, "Hey." Go get Bobby Allison, tell him to put his driver's suit on and come over to this photo shoot, right? Right. this video shoot that we're doing. And I literally, like, you know, my head exploded. I got to tell Bobby Allison. I'm going to tell Bobby Allison <laughs> to do anything, right. you know? I got it. And so I went over there and found Bobby, and, and you know, that was the right. start of a friendship that we have to this day. And Grab I, them hush puppies. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> meet I've been, me over here. Right. I've been fortunate through that experience to meet some of the greatest in the sport oh, sure. and get to know them. Junior Johnson, you know, going up and having breakfast at Junior's place. Right. Yeah. Hanging out with Pearson and, and Cotton Owens and Bud Moore and having lunch with those guys. Right. It's amazing. Um, you know, just uh, so Petty and, 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 and anybody guys. who's been doing this as long as, as this is, right. is going to have. We've, we've, had, we've all had the privilege right. of running into these sure. people at some point in time. Mm-hmm. So. And and that's that's what that's what's great about this right. our, our guest tonight. Yes, you know there's that connection. That and not only all this stuff he's got. He's We're gonna show us in a minute here. Yeah. yeah, but no, that 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 stuff's awesome, and that that's what keeps us going, right? Right. Because there's a lot of people that don't like. We were talking before the show. Next month is gonna be 20 years since we lost this guy back here. There's a whole generation that's like, I understand. I've heard about Dale, but they right. don't. They're, they're a little bit blind to it. But I think the but they're. You know, people one generation up go, hey, I'm going to tell you about this guy. Right. And I'm going to show you some stuff. So his his legend will always live on. But it, it, I don't want to say it's diminished, but there's not as, as a big uh, following because, you know, some of yeah. passed on. You said something great when, we, when you came in and we were talking about him. And and I love the analogy yeah, ahead, that you gave. And, and, and I want you to I want you to tell our, our people what you, what you said because I felt the same way about the guy. I'm getting goosebumps just yeah. talking about right. it. Yeah, know? I mean, uh, I was, you know, when I first went into the garage area and, and you, Dale was this larger than life character and I remember the first time I saw him and I was walking through the center of the garage and all the cars on either side and Dale's coming down 
the other direction. And it was like there was a force field in front of him. Mm -hmm. He just, everybody just moved mm -hmm. out of the way. There yeah. was an aura about right. him. And he just intimidated the hell out of me for the longest <laughs> period of time. I'm not lying. You know, as a guy who had to go get him to do, you know, video shoots and stuff like right. that, I was always just nervous as hell <laughs> when I talked to him. That you'd say it around things. Yeah, say whatever, 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 whatever right. you yeah. know. Yeah. And, but he, it was just like this force field that just pushed yeah. everybody out of the way. There was a presence and an aura about this guy that just will never be repeated. Mm -hmm. It just won't happen. Agreed. So, yeah, totally agree with you on that. Yeah. Perfect. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I worked for Rural Sports for many years, right. and then in 2000, Fox comes in and kind of alters the landscape, right? right? Mm -hmm. they, they take over half the season. Um, you know, Turner got a middle part of it, and then right. eventually right. The the NBC out. comes in. But it altered the landscape. It shut Rural Sports down because right. they were no longer necessary. Mm -hmm. the, these networks decided they were going to do it on their own. So uh, I went to work for NASCAR, and I was in charge of their video archives, their libraries. Okay. And um, it just continued my passion for the sport. You know, be able to go in the archive and see these videotapes and put them in and watch these old races and, and really understand the history of the sport. And my job was to transfer all of that content from three quarter beta, VHS, every known format wow, that ever VHS existed and beta, yeah. Yeah, to digital. Okay. Because, uh, you know, at that time, NASCAR realized we need to preserve the archive, but we need to make it available to the partners so they can mm -hmm. tell stories. Yep. And ultimately for NASCAR, generate revenue off of it, which is, you know, the, the goal. The goal yeah. And so as we were doing this transfer of uh, videotape to digital, when I was working at World Sports, I would often call the photographers because they just wasn't assets to tell stories. And I would right. call these photographers, Don Hunter, Tom Kirkland, these are the guys, and say, hey, I need a picture of Junior Johnson from Darlington. And they would say, well, I probably have it, but it's in a box or it's in a basement. It's going to take me a week to get it. And I'm like, well, that's not how this works. I need it tomorrow in right. yeah. digital format. And so you, just, you recognize there was a need. It just didn't exist. It's a quicker thing. It just didn't exist. So I, you know, I went to my bosses at NASCAR and I said, hey, you know, while we're preserving the video record, we should do the same thing for the photography side of the business because right. I've heard horror stories about, you know, uh, families where the photographer had died and the families didn't know what to do with it. They threw the stuff away. They oh just wanted to be shut to think about it. Right. And, you know, at that time, they just weren't interested. And so this this idea just kind of floated in the back of my mind for a couple of years. And when I left NASCAR, I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it myself. I'd gotten to know these guys really mm -hmm. well and with the families. So I went to them and I said, let me be your agent of record. Let me right. first help you preserve it. Exactly. Because right. photography will not last forever. The right. only thing that creates it will destroy it, which are the chemicals. Yes. The humidity, how it's being stored, right. whatever the case is. I said, let's preserve it first. And then secondly, let's make it available. Because I knew when I was producing, yeah. I needed that content. Right. And I couldn't have access to it. And I figured if I could get it and put it in one place and make it available, people like me would want it. So the families were receptive to that? They were receptive. Because okay, yes. they wanted to see their fathers, uncles. Well, yeah, those, and, and Don Hunter was still alive at that time. Tom Kirkland was still alive at that time. And these right. guys, this wasn't a hobby. These guys spent their entire lives capturing the history of motorsports. Wow. Sure. In Don Hunter's case, it was every form of motorsports right. on the planet. Okay. It wasn't NASCAR, just NASCAR. He did IndyCar and mm -hmm. Formula One. Yeah. And Daytona 24 and Can-Am. Wow. And he went to Sebring and he went over to Le Mans and he, you know, he just, he was an amazing guy. He actually took a photograph that was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. Think about that. And that image yeah. is in the, right now mm -hmm. on permanent display in the Metropolitan Museum, Museum of Art in New York City. So this mm -hmm. guy was larger than life. He was the dean in terms of <clears throat> motorsports photography. And, and you know, uh, uh, us being motorsports guys, mm -hmm. we all know that there's certain photographs, you know, uh, I think of one in, in my head of, of, of like Mario Andretti you know, uh, uh, sitting in, in his car at, at Indy or something, right. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. with an open face helmet on with, with <laughs> just a, with just a, right. a, a mask, mm -hmm. you know, and there, there's certain things like that, that, you know, these older photographs are just so precious right. and they're, and they're so nostalgic to our sport. And there's a value but, uh, to the history, like not this way, but you know, like uh, just, just so a, us, a yeah. human element of right. it, you, you know, exactly. so, you know, that, that stuff. And like I said, you're going to show us some okay. cool stuff that... Let's get to it. Let's get to what it. You got? You got yeah, that? so, you know, Don Hunter and Tom, Tom, you mentioned Tom Kirkland. Tom was, fair you back. Yeah, Tom was the original track photographer at Darlington. He mm -hmm. grew up in, in Florence, so he saw the track being built as right. a teenager. And he would go by there every day and watch Harold Brasington on the earth moving machines, you know, moving the dirt. The original owner of the track. And, and so he went to the track and said, hey, you know, I want to take some photographs. And they're like, 
okay, no problem. They didn't have a photographer. Um, and so from that point until 1967, he captured every event of the tribe. He captured the entire historical record of that facility. And so we managed that collection on behalf of his wow. family. Mm -hmm. um, and back then, they did four by five negs, two and a quarter negs, big format stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you a quick story about Tom. So he had this, you know, the manual camera, and he would, you know, take a picture and have to pull the thing out, put the thing back in. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, he was he was at Darlington taking all these photos, and it frustrated him because these accidents would happen. Right. And he could only get he one frame yeah, of it, it, and then the accident was over by the time he could get the mm -hmm. film back in the camera. So he was the first guy to bring a sequence camera into NASCAR, and oh. he had it smuggled out of East Germany. Okay. Okay. Because they were the ones that had it. And he went to Darlington in 56 and took a picture, a series of six images, the first sequence ever of an accident happening. It was Jack Smith right. going over the rail. Boom, 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 boom. First he, time it had ever been happened. He used all these different cameras to do it. He, one, one camera. One camera. It's a sequence camera. Okay, got it. Okay. Small out of Germany. And so, okay. up until that time, you could only take one picture. And then got you have to change the, the film and do, do another one. Hmm. And so, he was the first guy to take a sequence. Uh, image and the camera was illegal or something. Or? No, well, it was it had been manufactured in in Germany and, and, and was behind the Iron Curtain. There was oh, camera, yeah, so, so what yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, no. And so he had it smuggled out. Uh, another quick thing about Darlington, most people don't know. Johnny Reb was actually not an American. His name mm -hmm. was Bob Van Witzenberg, and he was from Austria. Wow! And he escaped Nazi Germany. Because he was, he was right. actually being hunted by the, the Nazis and came over here. So the guy that's riding on the hood of the cars at Darwin this stuff is Red, epic, folks. Okay, <laughs> I didn't even know was that. not even an American. Right. Okay. okay, I mean, it, it, and I talked to him before, you know, and he. It's just amazing story. Right. I mean, it's just crazy. But anyway, Johnny Reb, real quick, we got some questions we, here. Yeah, we'd yeah. say yeah. Yeah, bull. <laughs> Nice. Uh, okay, we got some questions here. Um, one is okay. Here we go. Ryan Clark. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, people say, don't meet your heroes. Who is somebody we should meet? That's part one of the question. Mm -hmm. uh, well, unfortunately, they passed away, and that would be Junior Johnson. Okay. Uh, the man was <clears throat> the kindest, mo the smartest, kindest guy I ever met. Mm -hmm. If you could put those two things together, he was not only an incredible racer and a car owner, an incredible human being. He had us up to his place to have breakfast many times. Right. He would sit there, and I did. I shut my mouth and I just listened. I mean, seriously. Which is tough for three guys like this because we know I'm just kidding. He, he, he you just, liver mush? You, you like liver mush? Yeah. I mean, he cooked the best breakfast. I'm sure. And he would tell me stories. Johnson was a junior, not no, no, no. Yeah, and just <laughs> just talk. You know, just yeah. listen to what he had. And he, to had say. And he had that dialect. He goes, "Hey," and the way he would talk, like he captured your attention. He was so smart. Yeah. And and he he had an aura about him too, right? Because he was so quiet, and he only spoke when he had something to say, right? Quick, that was pertinent, right? Yeah. That was, yeah. Quick aside, I later on went to work for the NASCAR Hall of Fame before it opened. Okay. And my job was to help find archive or ar artifacts to put in the display cases. Okay. okay? And, and by the way, there's probably two or three hundred images of mine in that Perfect. facility. Nice. Uh, all Very of nice. displays. But I'll never forget we one of the one of the stories we wanted to tell was moonshine, and uh, of course. you know the evolution of NASCAR, <laughs> yeah. and. The executive director said to me, well, I think Junior would be the guy. And so he said, Don, why don't you make that happen? So I, I called Junior up. I said, Junior, we need a still. Can you get us a still? And Junior's dialect, he goes, uh, I can do better than that. I can build you one. <laughs> All mine are still going. Yeah, I said, what? <laughs> mine are busy. Yeah. 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 And he said, and he said to me, uh, how real do you want it to be? <laughs> I'm not kidding, right, sure. right? right? And I said, well, how real can it be? He said, I can have a making moonshine by the end of the night. <laughs> In the Hall of Fame. In the Hall of Fame. Could you imagine? Right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> samples on the That would knock it out of the park. <laughs> right? People lined up with a little cup. Go ahead. <laughs> so yeah. about a month later, Poor old kid. about a month Kill. later, Junior delivered the still. Okay. Brought it himself to the hall and set it up in the Hall of Fame. So this is it still there? The still that is in the Hall of Fame was built and installed by Junior Johnson. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So, you got the new that. That's a nice. 
That's a nice thing, Mark, to leave there. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Junior, Junior's the guy I uh, wish was still around. He was he was a special human. So. Okay. Part two of the question is: If I need to find a close-up photo of Mario Andretti in his car from 1986 without a watermark, where should I go? I guess it's a good. Uh, well, unfortunately, um, no, the, the problem is that these archives, and, and I'm, I, I am the curator of these archives, mm -hmm. and so my job is to protect the rights yeah. and assets of the photographers. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And so for a long time, I had an archive or database online that I would allow people to look at the images. Mm -hmm. That didn't, unfortunately, people just aren't good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're not nice. Yeah. And um, once it's out on the internet, people think they can use it for whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, but in terms of finding something that's not a watermark, come to me. Uh, you know, and, and I'll talk to you and figure out what you're trying to use it for. SmileMediaGroup.com. No, DonSmile.com. 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 Smile Marketing Group. Yeah. I'm on Facebook, Smile Marketing Group, um, and Twitter. <clears throat> so, we have a real treat for you guys tonight. Don has brought some of these photos with him. So, let's, you mind? Let's check. Yeah, let's 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 in here. So, the first thing I want to do is I want to introduce you to Don Hunter. Okay, this is Don Hunter. Okay. So this is uh, Rockingham at 69, um, and Don was, I was talking to him, you know, about him earlier, he was the Dean of Motorsports, right. and, um, you know, he he spent 35 years of his life capturing content. Mm -hmm. right. He grew up around Asheville, went to the mm -hmm. track up there, and just started taking photographs, and, you know, it led him to becoming, you know, this Pulitzer-nominated photographer. Um, and I'm extremely fortunate to have his archives mm -hmm. and be the curator of, of his collection. But you okay. got to know him on a pers very personal level. I got to know level. him on a personal yeah. level. And Don was, you know, he could be cantankerous. There's a lot of the people in the industry that probably know him and know right. that he was hard to work with. Right. He was a perfectionist. And, wrong with and his work shows it. A good um, photographer, a good fabricator, right. a good <laughs> writer. The one thing that's very important to me is that people remember who he is. Yeah. So the archive, his archive is owned by me, by Small Marketing Group. Right. But anytime I license the photography, it says Don Hunter oh, from Smile Media. So they know. He will always be the person right. who took these photographs. That's good. I want him to be that way. So that, that's, 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 that's really that's big on your part. It's on very courteous. Yeah. Um, courteous respectful. And, and respectful. Yeah, that's good. I mean, like I said, these guys dedicated mm -hmm. their lives to it. It wasn't a hobby. Yeah. No, I mean, right. they, li they literally spent every weekend at a racetrack right yeah you know and it was hard work and they did it you know and so. you used to spend 20 hours a day yeah so they would they'd be there and then so we have all kinds of treats for you we yeah. have here so this is one of his most famous photographs this is Asheville Weaverville in 56 right it's one of the first color photographs um, that was taken and this has been in books and magazines and television shows and it's out there everybody knows about this photo mm -hmm. but it is i love that one you know i love fireball that. roberts i love how the headlights yeah. you yeah. know I, I love those are those are stock cars stock with stock stock cars stock, yeah. stock yeah. cars and and the headlight caps and the yeah. chrome bumpers and the stock yeah. wheels and tires and back here yeah that Ralph, guy's a little Ralph bit, he's a little correct okay. and, and you, you know, know so yeah this is just an amazing who else do you know off the top of your head next to you oh that's fireball that's mark Marvin Pants, that's Buck Baker. Um, let's see. I'm going to see the car numbers to that's tell you. Yeah. yeah. Um, There's a lot of history in that photo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. And, and um, but anyway, that's one of the most. It looks like there's 50. There's 56, 56. That's yeah. a Ford, Ford. Yeah. 56, 57 uh, Fords. Right. Yeah, this was actually we were room. 56. What, you, what year was that? 56. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, so pretty good, good call. So um, we'll, I we'll, can figure out a fifty-six. We'll my, dad, my dad had one. I was like, mm -hmm. all right. So this is a pretty cool photograph. This is a cool one. I like this one. I'll, I'll put this one people here. may not have, may not understand the significance of this. Okay, so this is Leroy Yarbrough at Darlington in nineteen sixty-nine. He's just won the Southern Five Hundred. Look at his car. Okay. Right. That's like that's beyond a Darlington. Yeah, that's a Darlington. Yeah. Eric, the quarter panel off. <laughs> but he's in Victory Lane, and you right. can see yeah, him he's holding his trophy, and he's walking away. And Don captures this iconic image of him, his car, his trophy. Right. But that's not the story. What's the story, Don? The story is <clears throat> that Leroy earlier in the year had also won the Daytona 500 and the World 600. Okay. So when he captured the Southern 500, he in became the, the first driver to win the Triple Crown, ah. the Big Three. Through big three, the Daytona 500, which is right. the biggest race, right. the World 600, which is the longest race, and Darlington, which is the oldest. Right. And he was the first guy to do it. And this is the moment that it happened. And so, and look at that car. I mean, it's just yeah. yeah. 
So the guys, now would be in the garage. Yeah. yeah. Down hundred foot. That's so. amazing. Um, this is so cool. There's going to be a lot of tape on I'm, I'm, yeah. This is so going to be a lot of tape on <laughs> Give me the Sawzall. <laughs> you know, you can't do that That's right, exactly. You can't right, so, fix anything anymore. You know, there's a lot of second and third back. generation drivers. <laughs> a lot of second and third generation drivers right. in sport. We talk about the Allisons and, and whatever. So this is the Tom Kirkland's uh, couple photos that Tom took at Darlington in 1959. 59. So that okay. is Buck Baker and his young son, Buddy Baker. Got it. Okay. Your buddy looks like he's ready to play football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sixty-six. Yeah. He's a teenager. Okay. Jeez, look how tall. The general now, giant. If you flip it over, which I'm going to. Same year, same race. Richard Inley. So yeah, it's amazing. not Kyle and Richard. No, it's Richard, Richard Lee. Lee. I mean, that's it. Yeah. You could almost mistake that for. for if, for if, you, if you look at Kyle, I mean, uh, you got me saying <laughs> it. Look at Richard. He's got the button down. The you know, like the yeah. preview for the '70s look there with everything. Uh, you know, well, wearing loafers. Look, look oh, at loafers. Look, loafers. Look at black and white loafers. Yeah. Jeez, wingtips. That was something else. Driving with them things. And they yeah. drove them things. That's right. right. And he's got the. Uh, if you notice here, he's got a uh, bungee cord on the trunk because he basically drove that car to the track. Yeah, yeah. Right? With the, pl oh, the plate. Oh, that's where the plate yeah. on. That's where you get on. Yep. And got. And it's got the license plate. You guys were men. Oh yeah. This, this, this is racing. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> All right, so you know, we talk a lot about um, Bubba Wallace and, and the things that he's accomplishing in this sport. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember this guy. Yep, he was the is. first one to do it. And that's Wendell Scott, and that image is is iconic because it, the look of determination Absolutely. on his face mm -hmm. is amazing. Uh, that man deserves all the respect oh, that we can yeah. give him for the things that mm -hmm. he accomplished. The only African American thus far to win a NASCAR so Cup when Series I, race. When I was a kid growing up. When I was a kid growing up, Richard Pryor made a movie about him. Right, yep. And Grease Lightning. Grease Lightning was yep. one of my favorite Stern movies great of movie. all great time. Because I love Richard Pryor. Right. I love Wendell Scott. I love this story. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that, you know, it was kind of a bad deal how everything went mm -hmm. down. Yeah. But it, it's 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 our history. Yeah. You know, and he was a great race car driver. Yeah. He's in the Hall of Fame. That's a great picture. <clears throat> that was an awesome For everything he had to go through, the yes. things he endured... Which was no fault of his own, but he but in persevered. Jacksonville in 1963, he, he won it all together and he won the race. Yep. So uh, another iconic. Why Richard Priest Lightning, Richard yeah. Pryor? Yeah. Good, good. Good. It is a good movie. All right. So here's wait. A, there's more. Here's another one. All right. So this. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. I love this one. So this is Junior Johnson being interviewed by Chris Economaki. Um, <laughs> That's okay. for me. Look, look at him. Look, the, the helmet. Yeah. yeah, the white T-shirt. Got the helmet the white at Kmart. Down shirt, you know. Fire suit, you know. No fire suit. He basically had. Is there going to be a fire? And, white, and, and a button-down shirt. He had just won the 1962. Right. He had nowhere to put his cigarettes. That's the only where I. That's yeah. the only thing I see. So Chris Economaki, look at it. Look at equipment Economaki. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris, right. Chris, the dean of it's not of even wires is journalism, right? It's, it's the wires with the Chris Economaki cord on it. So Junior, tell me yeah, how you won. That's exactly right. right. Tell yeah. me how the car was <laughs> today, Junior. What kept you? So he won the race, <laughs> right? Right. You're doing air quotes. There was a up. scoring check. Oh. And Larry Frank was declared the winner about three days later. So they took all these photos of Junior and Victory Lane, and then everybody left. And then they told Junior, "Hey, you didn't win the race. He had to get the trophy back." And then they had to take pictures of Larry Frank just standing by his car with him to stand. Um, when I go over today. <laughs> but the interesting thing about this is that this was the 13th Southern 500. Okay. But if you're a memorabilia person, collector like me, you know that there is no such thing as a 13th Southern 500. It, you will never find a program. You'll never find any memorabilia. Racers are superstitious. So the Darlington Racetrack didn't do a 13th Southern 500. It was called the 12th Renewal. <laughs> and then the next year, it was the 14th Annual. Perfect. So, so if you have your hands on that, yeah. what are those so, programs? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So this is a pretty cool. Don was also an innovator. So long I before... Like this, I like this story. Okay, so we have here. Let's long see. before in-car cameras, Don would mount the camera to the inside of the car. Right. So in this case, he mounted it under the dash inside Leroy Yarbrough's car. So like the car. steering column or something right. close to that. So this is Leroy Yarbrough. Leroy Yarbrough. Okay. And he mounted it to the underside of the, of the dash there. Yeah. And put a, a switch on the steering wheel. And as Leroy was driving around the track, he would click the button and take his own picture. 
and then so he's an, he was an incarnate. He was so, that is so that. clear. That's so that's amazing. such a nice picture. Yeah, and so it was just the he he was innovative as well as being but just an amazing. You look at the fire suit and how it's not even like you know. Yeah, you don't so have. They got like the Elvis oh, collar going there. I would be like. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that, that, hopefully that's a pace lap. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Can you imagine Rick racing? It looks like, you know, this is a pretty oh iconic photo, this one. too. Yep. And this is Kev Yarborough. He had just won the 1969 Daytona 500. And, you know, Don was a master of capturing the moment. And if you can see right. that... The Leroy looked like, you know, yeah, Dean Martin. Would you like to swing on <laughs> a star? You know, the, the trophy is reflected in his face. And yeah, that's, that, an that's, iconic, that's, that's an awesome. iconic, iconic. And that's like the center nice part of it, too. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. Um, so Don, Don's collection is just amazing, and and I, I, you know, I find myself. The thing about the guys back then is they weren't. I talk to the photographers today. I know all the photographers today, and they mm -hmm. tell me they'll take a hundred thousand images on a weekend. Right. Okay. Because it's all digital. They're just spraying. Mm -hmm. Right. These guys had to pay for this film. Okay. It was not cheap. Right. They took hundreds of photographs. But they were usually working for mm -hmm. a, a publication, whether it's Car and Driver right. or whatever it was. Yeah. And they would send some images to them, and the other couple hundred would go in a binder and go on a shelf, never to be seen again. Yeah. I mean, so now, when I pull those binders down and I start looking through them, and I see Daytona from '64, mm -hmm. and I take all those images out, and I lay them on a light box, and I look at them. You, I, I consider myself the Indiana Jones of racing photography right. because you never know the gym you're going to find. Right. And there's so many stories that I've discovered by doing that that I didn't even know about that were that were lost to history because they happened and a photograph was taken right. and it may have been discussed at that time, but then it was forgotten and time moved on. And I'll give you a quick example. Sure. I saw this image from Daytona in 69 and it was a smashed mercury. The whole right side was caved in. And above the door, it said Jackie Ix. And anybody who's a racing fan knows that Jackie Ix was a Formula One driver. Okay. Okay. And I looked in their official record, and there was no record of Jackie Ix ever being at Daytona in 69. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is going on here? What happened there? So I had to start digging up some period literature. And what I discovered was Ford had mm -hmm. asked Jackie to come to Daytona right. to race as a teammate to Leroy Yarbrough okay. on Junior Johnson's team. So Junior gave Jackie a mercury to, to go out so he goes out and in practice he crashes hard and that was the image i had okay got it car is smashed he's done then he's done yeah, he's on okay. a hook he's on a hook right. and he's walking back to the garage leroy yarborough also crashed in practice okay right. junior only had one more car I right? say he ran out of cars. <laughs> right. So he had to give it to his primary driver, Leroy. Leroy, right. So Jackie never made a qualifying attempt. Okay, got it. Therefore, he's not in the official record. Because he didn't. Because he didn't. Right. Didn't just qualify. Practice. Just practice. Right? Just practice. But then Leroy goes out and wins the race. He won the 1969 Daytona 500 in that backup car. In the backup car. In the backup car. But there's so many images that I come across. There's no such thing as a backup car. Yeah. Just, just another just one off the lot. Another car, yeah, roll we'll get that one off the lot. <laughs> But there's so many cars, there's, so many, in it. there's yeah. so many images that I come across like that right. where I'm like, what is happening in this picture? I don't sure. understand it. Right. So and you have to dig and whatever, and then you find right. these stories, and it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So, All right. one more picture. One more. We're the marketing one part. more really okay. cool. All right. oh, this, this, this one's really okay. cool. Okay. You guys got it. Yeah. This this one gave us goosebumps. I'm going to show him a picture when we're done. Sure. Or, when we're off the air, and see. If, uh, so in, in 1987, 1987, Don Hunter. Was asked to take a promo photo of this man uh, for a billboard. He's also behind you. That went up in uh, in around Charlotte to promote the Winston and the World 600. Right. And so, if you notice, his face is dirty. This is a pretty iconic photo. Right. There's a series of images. Tell him how his face got dirty. So like basically, Don Don shot this in his basement. Okay, he has <laughs> his man cave. His man cave. Trying to do the show. <laughs> Don developed every one of his own pictures. Right. So all these pictures he did in his own dark room. Okay. Okay. And so he went and had his wife go to his fireplace and get some soot and rub it all over Dale's face. Mine's they want, gas. We're not right? getting <laughs> soot out. They wanted to make it look like he'd been racing, right? The day, okay. of, the yeah, the day of the thunder look, right? right? Yeah. Well, in one of the images that they took was Dale try wearing to get this in the promo photo. Hang on. Hang on. I'll try to get those. Wearing one. these. Oops, sorry. Hang, hang on, folks. Bear with it. Bear with us. This is important. His iconic goggles. Okay, so the goggles. Okay. The bubble right. goggles. The bubble, bubble goggles. goggles that we all picture right here. So when I got to know 
Uh, my kids love them for airsoft. Yeah, when, I, when I got to know Don Hunter and, and we started going through his collection and, and whatever, I remember I was in there one day and he said, hey, come here. And he started, and he pulled this image out and said, you see that? He said, here are the goggles that Dale was wearing in that photo shoot. That's pretty cool. And you have. And he said, here, you can have them. He gave you the, he gave me the goggles. That, I'm sorry, folks. That's kind of cool if you're a big history fan. Really like cool. We are. So these are the goggles that he's wearing in this right. picture. Right. There you go. And it is my most cherished possession. And we're going to raffle them off. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm out. I'm not out of your life. <laughs> and we're going to auction that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm yeah, kidding. I'm out. That, that is amazing that you have those and that you own them. So you said, I think you said you have more than 200,000 yes. photos. 200,000 photos. Yeah. You think you have a lot on your phone with your family and kids? This guy has. And the, the problem is that only 28,000 of them are right. digitized. So the you know the other hundred and sixty mm -hmm. plus right. are sitting in binders in in boxes, Waiting to, prints, yeah. negatives, slides. Yeah. Right. It is a massive undertaking. It has taken me thirteen years just How to digitize. How many do you think you're in? What's that? How many? You got ASA photos? One or two. Right. Yeah, it's taken me thirteen years just to get to that point because <laughs> I digitize and right. caption all my own photos. The most important thing about a photo is it has to be captioned right. properly, yeah. or it can't be searched. And if it can't be searched, Search. it can't be used. Because if you have to go back for yourself alone, the metadata right. that's embedded in the right. photo is the only way to search it, right? Okay. And so if you digitize a photo and there's no caption, if you go and say I need a Junior Johnson photo and there's no caption right. associated with it, you never see that image again. Yeah. And you don't get to use it. So that's really for the clients, so that I can okay. find what they need. But in doing that, it's a laborious task because mm -hmm. if you're looking at an image and you don't know what track it is, you right. don't know what right. gear it is, you have to research and figure it out in order to right. caption it right. properly. So a lot um, of work. Guy from uh, Jamie Pugh up from Racer and Lancaster Speedway says that photo is badass. Mm -hmm. Capitalized. <laughs> okay, let's switch gears. Switch let's gears go, here. Let's go to marketing. Talk about marketing. What this guy can do for a short track. Sure. Right. Okay, so. Your expertise in a marketing strategist. Correct. Um, so I'm a short track racer. I hear all, I, I have people call me and go, there's no money out there. Nobody cares about short track racing. I have a, but I have a street set. Mm -hmm. How, what, what are my things that I need to do to go to somebody and say, hey, Mr. Business Guy, I'd like you to get involved with my racing. Right. Mr. Local Pizza Guy. Or right. Mr. Whatever, local just, what, gas station right. guy. And this this could apply to all levels. Mr. Local well, Quick Trip. We're applying, we're talking to the grassroots racers tonight, just the uh, uh, people up and coming. So your advice. Well, I think the first thing is people have to stop thinking about race marketing as decals on a race car. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's not about decals on a race car. Right. right? The, the, if you have a 10-step marketing program, decals on a race car is number 10. Because... The likelihood that you're going to be in victory lane, pretty slim. Mm -hmm. The likelihood you're going to get any airtime of any significance, pretty slim. Right. But you still have to show an ROI. You right. still have to show your partner a return. Return, return on right? right? So you need to start thinking about how do I build a program to take advantage of the assets that I can provide that don't include victory lane right. or television coverage or a huge social media presence mm -hmm. or whatever. So I have almost the, the first thing that everybody asks me when they call me is do you find sponsorship and my answer is always no and yes and I'll tell you why most racers always say I need money and then I'll do the marketing side right it's not how it works right. you have to build your brand you have to invest in your own program right. that doesn't necessarily mean money it means time right. you need to understand what is your value statement what is my brand proposition what makes me unique and different okay from the thousands of other people sitting behind the wheel of a race car asking for sponsorship dollars. Right. It's not this shotgun approach of sending an email out and sending emails out to people and saying, hey, I want to put your decals on my race car and I'll promote your business. Those days are over, right. okay? Right. You have to be thinking mm -hmm. strategically about what makes me different and unique. And it could be your personal story. It could be your ability to influence and, and represent a brand. It could be your geographic presence. It could be where you race and, and the market in which you race. Right. So you have to start connecting the dots between what you are and what you do mm -hmm. to the potential partners that could benefit from that. It's not a shotgun approach. Right. Okay, you can send 100 emails out a day and if you get one reply, you're gonna be lucky. You know why? Because the people that you're sending it to are getting 100 emails from the other people oh, that are sitting next to you on the racetrack. You know, hypothetically speaking, I'll say it like this. Mm -hmm. 
You could be the re best race car driver on the planet. It, or at your local but track. But if, yeah. if you don't have yeah. a personality, you you ain't going oh, no. anywhere. Right. Exactly. You know? and, and you could be the worst race car driver on the planet, but if, if you're missing a leg and, and you're in an eye and you, and you got a parrot on your shoulder and you're driving a monkey in a car, you're you're the best story on, 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 on Earth. <laughs> because you're different than everybody else yeah, out there. Right. So, so, you know, and I, 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 I mean, that's how I put things. Cool you, know, you might have to have a gimmick but you know, th there was a guy who drove with a monkey. Yeah, in the car. Said, yeah, there you there go. go. So I have pictures of that in my yeah, car. Of course <laughs> you do. I, I, that's why I bring it up. I knew he was. Nobody'd say I got one right here. Yeah. But no, I you mean, might want to get a monkey. Moore's right. I mean, you have to find what makes you unique and different. And, right. and he's being, you know, extreme and, and, and facetious about it. Right. But the point is, what what's your story? Yeah. And I'll give you an example. If you are at a racetrack and or or, or uh, the PRI show, or you're at a networking event, or you're at you know an industry event, and a guy walks up to you, guy, girl, doesn't matter, somebody in an executive position, yeah. and says to you, "What problem do you solve for me?" If there is silence, yeah, like what is happening answer. right now, right. that's going to be a very short conversation. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because you haven't done the work to understand who you are and what makes you different and unique. You need to understand it and be able to repeat it to right. somebody. Okay, so you need to understand. Doesn't matter that they, they don't care that you started racing when you were six years old no. and you won. They we're don't doing, care about right that. Right. Right? We're doing right now. What is it that you can do for me? What is the problem that you solve for my marketing program? All right, and so we talk about short track racers mm -hmm. and regional racers and whatever. I use a term called organic marketing. And what I mean by that is um, you likely shop and use services in and around where you live and likely in and around where you race. Okay, so those services are organic to your life. They so are they're, things they're that within you, reach. There are you things right. that you use right. or you see being used. Okay, what you need to do is research the local companies instead of just sending them an email and say, hey, I want to put your decal on a race car. Research them and say, are they currently advertising print radio television right. if they are they have a marketing budget they're spending money right so your challenge is then how do i get them to either understand that my platform my race program can either work with or replace some of the platforms they're already spending money on right. okay and so that could be a couple different things it could be hey i have a huge social presence and i'm able to influence on your behalf it could be I race in a, in a region geographically where you have a presence right. and I could bring foot traffic to your facility and generate foot traffic for increased sales. It could be your ability as a personality to be an on-camera spokesperson or brand ambassador mm -hmm. for them. There's a lot of different ways in which you can then be an influencer and solve a problem for them. They're already spending money on advertising. You, you Get them to spend it with you. You have a picture here somewhere. Where, where's, the, where's the Clyde Torco chicken pit? So if I guess what Don's saying, if there's people around you that are already marketing, yeah. doing okay, so everything. So here's oh, sorry, this so you guys right. know what this is. Hold that up. There you go. Hang on. Hang on. That's Clyde Torkel's chicken pit. That's the fastest chicken in the south. Mm. Maybe you're the guy who goes to your local steakhouse and say, you know what, I'm going to sell steaks for you. Right. Solving I'm, the problem. I'm, I'm a, exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it, and that, that, mm -hmm. this movie was right. a joke, but it was also so that, fun. That, that's from. It, but it also. That's, that's from that's Stroke, Stroke Race. race. Stroke race right. He's the fastest chicken <clears throat> in the South. He right. had to drive with a chicken suit on. Now, I don't want anybody driving with a chicken <laughs> suit on. But what I'm getting at is well, that. You have to do an appearance. You, 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 you <laughs> right. know, they're, they're, what, what he's saying yeah. is, is you, you know, you go to your. Maybe you go to your local steakhouse and you say, hey, uh, I'm such and such, uh, John Smith, and. And I'm gonna, I want to pump your steakhouse up, right. and I'm gonna tell everybody, hey, you know what? I drive fast because I eat your steaks, or right. or or whatever. But but I, it's it's first of all, what he's saying is is you have to be the person that helps sell right. that other person. And you have business. to you have to step out of your cockpit, not just take the decal. You have to make a commitment. Right? Well, I, I always say, stop thinking like a racer. You already know that part. Right. Start yes. thinking like a consumer. Mm -hmm. Start thinking like a consumer. Okay, start thinking about how would I interact with this brand? What would make me want to purchase it? What right. would make me want to eat it? What would make me want to wear it? Right. Then start thinking about how you can 
work with that partner that you're proposing this to, mm -hmm. come up with a solution. What is the problem you solve for them? Right. Okay. If you can come up with a solution of your problem solver, you are you are in. You have their attention and they're going to listen to you. You're not one of these other people who's mm -hmm. just sending an email saying, I want to put your decals on my race car. Be a problem solver. Right. That is what gets people's attention. Right. That's, okay. what, that's what my life mm -hmm. is. So let me bring it up. So I, let's pretend I own a sports bar. During the summer, there's no sports on except racing. I say, well, I'm going to start showing NASCAR races. Hey, you're a driver. What can you do to start bringing people in? Well, what I'm going to do for you, Tim, is yeah. I'm going to so I'm going to get my I'm, I'm going to put your brand on my car, right? And I'm going to tell my buddies and friends right. that that we need to come by you afterwards yeah. and, and and celebrate. Sure. And then I'm going to tell everybody in the stands, hey, hey, folks, you know, <laughs> Tim's got up. a good beer special <laughs> or wing special or. So or, wait, will you show up with your race car on Sun? On absolutely, Sun? we're going to park it out front. Right. We're going to sign right. autographs. We're going to right. You know, because that's what we do. That's it. Exactly. It's the whole visual of how to get people. I mean, we know, what is it, 72% of race car racing yeah. fans are loyal to brands. Is that the... Very much so. But right. it, it, again, it's it, it, geographically, you can influence, right? Mm -hmm. You have to start thinking about, again, it's not about decals on a race car. Right. Okay. You have to start thinking about all of the ways in which you can be a, a facilitator to help them either sell their widget, create a new widget, distribute their right. widget. One of the things that a lot of short trackers and, and others don't pay attention to are the B2B aspects. Even at a lower level, there are opportunities to what I call connect the dots. And so if you have a partner or you there are other partners that are already in the motorsports space, okay, that are working in, in there, start thinking about how, what business would benefit from doing business with them, Got it. okay? And so then you can go to that other team if it's not part of your team and say, look, I want to go after this potential partner. You currently have this partner and they sell X. And I think this partner could buy X or be able to distribute X. So how can we work together to make that happen? Right. So I'm, 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 I'm selling wings. Let's go to the chicken right. farm. Right. So I'm, I'm a lumber company. You're a construction company. Right. Exactly. And, and exactly. even though you're on different teams, there's right. still an opportunity to connect the dots. Yeah. Okay? So don't think of it as competition. Right. Think of it as opportunity. So I drive a car, you drive a car, I have lumber sponsorship, you're a construction company. It's a construction I'm going to be the nail owner because I'm going to say, get nailed. <laughs> go buy lumber at Tim's. We were, we were doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got porn. What? But you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there we go. But I'm just jumped so, now, gotcha. I'm good. That was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, I don't know what to do here. That's right. Welcome to the show, Don. Hammer. <laughs> no, 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 don't go back to the dark. Yeah. So, so lumber company. The thing is, so if like, you're on a car and I'm a car and they say, oh, look at this. So my lumber company sold the construction company and that's from racing and that guy's going to want to stick Guess with what? me. Guess what? This, this sponsor's making yeah. money. Right. This and sponsor's making make money. money then. And from now they can phone it to exactly. both of them. Yeah. Right. Okay. So again, start thinking outside the box. Get out of your race car and start mm -hmm. thinking like a consumer and think about it like a business person would think about it. Right. And the thing that I see that is most frustrating to me, and I've got a pile of them on my desk as we speak, are the marketing decks that I see coming from grassroots racers and, and, and regional racers. And it's the same thing over and over again. What is it? It's, my name is Stan Smith, and I drive a race car, and right. I've been racing cars since I was six years old, and I've won all of these races, and, and I want to put your decal on my car, and I want to do the gold, right. silver, or bronze package, and right. here's where I'll put your decals, and I want to put them on my helmet. Right. I literally want to throw them in the trash, and that's generally where they end up, because they're not effective. Well, it yeah, doesn't and work. Well, and we get this now, so, so we all know that what's going on. You can't market yourself. That guy's marketing himself. He's trying to market his talent. Right, right, right. And 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 that it, it's the it force of the work trees. Anymore. Yeah. You're standing in the middle. Yeah. You can't see what I see. You don't right. see what others right. see. Right. I see opportunity. I see your story. Right. I see your voice. Right. Okay. And I I want to craft that. We had Chase that Briscoe here, writer. and he come from absolutely nothing, nothing. and his story it's is great. so powerful right. that that's what makes. That, that makes mm -hmm. that even better. You know, someone right. can market right. him because of his story. Business owner out there who struggled to put two nickels together and two quarters together. Right. He's like, you know what? I identify with you because there was times I was robbing from Peter to Paul so I can keep this business going. Now I'm successful. You know what? I identify with you. Well, the yeah. other thing I get to think about too is get out of the same pond. 
all of the guys that you race with are all fishing in the same pond. Yeah, exactly. Okay? For sure. That's and good. so again, it's it's the same debt going to the same people yeah. over and over again, and they're just inundated, and they're just like, oh my gosh, I, I just can't I, deal with this. Yeah, they're over it. So I'll give you an example. I worked with a guy who was uh, who's now racing in the Pirelli GT series, and. He was born with a severe club foot and a cleft palate. Okay. So one of his feet is shorter than the other, mm -hmm. his leg is shorter than the other. And at four years old maybe, his uh, doctors told his parents they wanted to amputate his, his leg just below the knee. Because mm. he would never have a normal childhood, right. he would never whatever. And the parents were like, no, 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 we're not doing that. Right. So they didn't go to Shriner's Hospital and he had 10, 12, 13 different surgeries. Um, he still wears a, a shoe to, you make know, up, to, right. to make up for it, but he's gotten that fixed. He got his, his cleft palate mm -hmm. fixed. Right. He's won some regional championships in the SCCA, and now he's racing professionally in the Pirelli GT Series. The point is, his story right. has already given him an opportunity, and this is why I tell people, understand your story. He's different and unique, right. okay? Yep. And not everybody has that kind of story, but everybody has a story. Exactly. You have to figure right. out what it is. Right. But it, what it does is it gets him out of the same pond. So now, if he understands his story, he goes, I can speak to prosthetic companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can speak to pharmaceutical companies. Right. Yeah. I can speak to four or, or, or uh, non-profit organizations right. who are trying to generate money, raise money, for children who right. have disabilities. Sure. So his is a whole lot bigger and a lot different right. because he now is using his unique story to go to potential partners, and he understands who he should be talking to and why. Right, right. But, and, and, okay. and and everybody is unique. We're all we're all different. We're all different. We, you just gotta find your niche. You gotta you gotta. What separates you from everybody? Yeah. But but you have to, you know, use your other talents besides your driving right. to get you further ahead. Okay. You know, but I I always say this: if you don't have a personality. Not sure. gonna go far. Well, I'll tell you another quick story too. Uh, when we talk about content, obviously social social marketing is huge. Mm -hmm. Content is king. Right. Okay, but you have to create content, and, and this goes to the idea of, of getting additional partners based on thematics. So think about what makes what is it that you like to do as an individual, mm -hmm. not as a race car driver. Right. Okay. I enjoy hunting and fishing. I like model cars. I like racing RCs. Right. I like I whatever it is. Okay. Right. Right. If you understand that and you create content around those things, not just racing, you, you're already racing fans. What you need to do is get people outside of that sphere to also pay attention to you. So mm -hmm. if you start creating content, so you're like to hunt and you, and you create content based on your like of hunting and fishing, you are suddenly attracting a whole different component of people. Right. Like, oh, I identify right? with him. Yeah. Right? Who say, right. Hey, I like hunting and fishing too. Right. Uh, and oh, he happens to be a race car driver, so I'm going to follow him. Right. So now your social presence has increased and you've brought in a whole different group of people. Wow. Now suddenly the sponsorship opportunities there because you're speaking to a group of people, right? Right? Who have influence in that space. They're buying those products. Right. And then you can go to that partner and say, "Hey, I have a, you know, I enjoy hunting and fishing and I've got a lot of people right. who do the same and I can influence on your behalf." You don't hunt and fish? You're never gonna have Johnny Morris. <laughs> exactly. And well, get, that's one of the best right. guys in the sport. There, there so, was there was one know, driver who had, there was a driver who had sponsorship who was afraid of water. I'm not gonna go into it now. But, I mean the point I'm making is you, you have to understand it's not just about being in a race car. Right. Stop thinking like a race car right. driver. Start thinking like a consumer who wants to buy product or sell product or you know, whatever it is. And if you understand what makes you different and unique and what you like and you create content around that or you target companies that would benefit from that and you know how to talk to them because you've done the research to understand who you are as an individual, you are going to be successful and you're going to be this much further ahead of all your competition. Okay. Not only on the track, but off the track. We, so we, no, we, right. dinged, we dinged, we dinged. What, what, I, I want you to tell these short tell, track tell drivers. Everybody, everybody listen, because you, you have hit on some awesome I, things. I, I want you to tell these short how, track drivers. How do you get in touch with them? Yeah. Uh, right. Tell them his website. Tell them the website. Don Smile. Don, Don Smile. Smile. It's S-M-Y-L-E. S -M -Y -L -E. Oh, yeah. Dot com. For, um, your, uh, for your sponsorship. We're talking like local. For some, Not my, needs, but yeah, yeah. if you want to learn how to do, you, you how to do it better. Right. Because We're going to say how to do it better, right? Because like you said, you're all in the same, fish in the same pond. Don's going to get you another pond and at least help you or guide you along. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Today. Yeah. The pho photographs, the, everything else, and, 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 and your passion for the marketing, 
I hope some people tonight picked up on that because you think, oh, I'm just going to drive the car and you know, right, and I'm going to be great. Fifty bucks for a tire. No, you have to think beyond outside the window. Yeah, it was right? it was very good insight yeah, on it. So. I love man, it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, it's been a blast, man. Thanks for having me on okay. Pub Table Racers. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we say it? Shall we say it? Good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Oh, next week, Liz Prestella is a uh, female, the only female full-time mechanic and tire specialist in the NASCAR Cup Series. She'll be our guest. And I think week. she changed tires too. And so she's done. Yeah, she's changed tires. Yeah, I, I yeah. met her when I was yeah. on the Cup team. She's she's, she's awesome. a sweetheart. Yeah, so, awesome. yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll have her on next week. Thanks, everybody. See ya. There you go. Wow. Hey, another great show. Great Thank show. you so much, everybody, yeah, for tuning in. It. We appreciate it. We do this every Tuesday night. And Warren, I think the guests we've had have been fantastic. Phenomenal. And the people that are following us, we appreciate it. We're reaching 42,000 people a month. Can you believe that? And uh, we appreciate you watching. Right. And, uh, We're having fun. I hope everybody else enjoys it. That's it. And it's just a fun show. Bucket of beer. Guys sitting around talking about it. So keep tuning in. We appreciate it. Check out our store and everything. But, um, we appreciate you people, and uh, we will see you next week, right, my friend? Yes, sir. All right. See you next week.